What's up YouTube? It's your boy Lopes and welcome back to another video. In today's episode, we're gonna do the fuel system. Uh, we're probably, Alex is gonna finish up some wiring. We're gonna do some upgraded brakes and rotors, upgraded suspension, upgraded axles. We got a bunch of stuff. Hope you guys are excited. Got a bunch of content coming. Let's get it. That was you. <laughs> <laughs> We have shafts rated up to 500 horsepower. Thanks a lot to Milo at JDM Addictions for hooking me up with this. Uh, we have an intermediate shaft that I purchased from Paul Fordor. You guys check out his YouTube channel. He makes some awesome content. Here it is, and we're gonna do the shafts. We got a lot of new parts coming in. The build is coming together. As you can see, Alex and I were messing with the fuel system already. Uh, this is just a brand new fuel filter with some of the K2 lines that we got. I will be integrating K-Tune and Acuity into one fuel system. So we have the regulator that has to be put up over there. Uh, some of the lines we already have just installed because we were mocking everything up and seeing how it works. So the fuel line from the actual car itself goes into a brand new fuel filter. Uh, I bought a brand new one. The old one was kind of messed up. So we did that and then into the AN lines here and then we're gonna I'll be working on this. Alex is gonna be working on doing the in intermediate shaft with the axles, hubs, and all that. And we're gonna try pumping this out so that we can get this car on the road. So this intermediate shaft comes off the RSX Type S and it's gonna go into the, obviously, RSX transmission. And then we're gonna connect the 32 mil axles onto that. If you guys see, we got some new Lope shirts. This is just something Alex and I wear to work on the car, but for some reason, if you guys are interested, hit up my Instagram, that's where I'll... I'm not gonna be promoting these, but if you wanna be part of this like exclusive club of people that have them, like Alex and I are the only people in the club so far, <laughs> hit me up and I'll probably send one out to you guys. Uh, it shouldn't be too expensive. I, the shirts cost $25, Wait so here. if you want one, it is, it's like 60 kilometer gas outside. If you want one, hit me up. And if you notice the audio sounding any better, let me know, I upgraded my mic. What'd you say? Gonna run today. I don't think so ladies and gentlemen, but right now we are putting the upper control arm I put new ball joints in the upper control arm and they are they are Moog I got some Moog outer tie rods also because they were needed So this car should handle great. We got some upgraded brakes to put in and Alex is just uh, wrenching away here <laughs> Alex what do you call a bear with no teeth. A gummy bear. Where'd you get that one from? We are focusing on the suspension components, trying to get the wheels on, so at least this can be a rolling chassis at some point, right? Hopefully today, we can get the spindles on, all that type of stuff. Uh, fuel setup is getting set up as we speak. I have a upgraded manifold and throttle body coming, uh, but we're just gonna put the fuel rail and everything on now it should be pretty easy to take it off afterwards to replace everything uh, but I'm super excited I think this is all gonna turn out super super nice so as you can see we have some brand new new suspension so Alex is just using the wire brush as you can see I think the whoever I bought this or he bought it off the last person that had it painted the bay with the suspension in and that's why it looks like that. So Alex is just tackling that. Uh, these are Buddy Club M Pluses that are going in the car. So like I said, the braking and the suspension on the car will accommodate the power. So it's rated up to 500 horsepower the axle. So you guys know that might be some future stuff happening there. That's a little Easter egg, I guess you can say. As you can see, this is the QD setup we have here. What's cool about it with Acuity's fuel rail is they give you information about everything. If this wants to focus in, it will show you exactly what I mean. Like They tell you everything you need to know right here. The closed-ended wrench, everything, which is really cool, and even underneath. So you're able to run a center feed setup or, you know, a side-to-side I don't know the exact terminology, but we're a regular one. And we're just doing the side. We're not doing a center feed setup on this guy here. Uh, I think once I have the new manifold with a new valve cover, it's gonna look really good. But for now, we're just gonna use it so that we can get the car running. Yeah, this is the way it's going. I'm using the OEM injectors also. 
and I'm just basically assembling this all and then after we can put it onto this beautifulness you know ugly duckling type of thing uh, but yeah I'll show you guys once it's all installed I'm pretty excited and then on the hub here as you can see if you just turn it just a little bit we did the ball joints move ball joints there also uh, so those are brand new and links are brand new or outer tie rods are brand new sorry and yeah trying to just make everything look a little better Alex did a pretty good job of cleaning that up that's not teal anymore which is nice and he's gonna continue working on this we took the braided lines from his RSX we're gonna see if it works with the new brake setup what I have is mini Cooper rotors with an EK9 Type R brake. I got it from Kevin Lips and I want to say thank you so much. I'll show you guys that very, very shortly once Alex is ready for it. So here are the insane shafts. And as you guys can see, we got the one rated up to 500 horsepower. And there's two sides to them. There's a female side and a male side. So the female side, which I have in my hand, Alex needs because that's going to connect into the intermediate shaft and then the male side will go to the driver's side that connects into the transmission. Oh my god, it's Christmas! You like your present? <laughs> I, so, I like Christmas. I like Christmas too. So this is obviously the side, the 32 mil side that goes into your rotor and your hub. Uh, the bottom side that's on Alex's leg which is right there is going to connect into the intermediate shaft which is what he is doing right now lube it up spit it a little bit and just shove her in okay So as you guys can see, the fuel rail and fuel gauge is looking mighty fine. Uh, the wiring from the tucked harness from the K2 and tucked harness looks really good also. It kind of fits and slims down. Remember, this is temporary. It's just so we can get the car running. Uh, so as you can see, this will be replaced, throttle body and the valve cover and they'll look super nice, super nice. But for now, the fuel gauge regulator, uh, we just put a sealant to hold the gauge properly in its place so this has got to dry and then we just got to mount it and they say when you mount it you have to mount it on the shock tower right here so we're going to mount it on this shock tower here screw some holes get some bolts and nuts and put that guy in there and then the one line will go into it one line will go from this fuel rake later to this side and out that way through the fuel filter and pretty much it's the system will be complete so this guy's just gonna drive for now. And Alex is working within the hub over here. How's it going, bud? It's going pretty good, man. Right? So I got new rotors and I have new uh, calipers to put in also, but it's nice to see an axle in here. As you guys can see, we got a nice little fancy axle. We got some braided lines. Mm -hmm. It's gonna break nice. It's gonna have some good power. Super excited. It's coming together slowly. But surely. All right, so here are the EK9 Type R brakes uh, with some slotted rotors. I believe they're StopTech. And the pads, I can't remember. I think they may be Hawk. This is Mini Cooper rotors, which are bigger than the stock ones. And then the brake pads and calipers are bigger. What I'm wondering is, will the hubs or will the steelies fit over these calipers? Probably not. I'm, I don't think so either, but I do want to repaint them. I'm not sure if I want to do it now or not. Because uh, we're trying to just get this car up and running. And then these are projects I can do in the future where I can repaint them. But I do have it out. So that's my debate right now. Uh, but the stopping power is going to be definitely increased in comparison to what it was before. Alex is just taking off the old rotor there. The screw usually. Oh, wow, it came out. Let's see the other one. Jesus Christ. This. Knock on wood, this car with the bolts and everything has been easier than like working on my like CSX and all those other cars. Everything with my CSX, I think everything was stripped and seized. Or anything that we would do it would be 10 times harder. Remember that? Yeah. 
and this car, everything, not a single bolt has been seized in this car. Incredible. Look at the difference in rotors. Ooh that looks good. We're gonna have some big rotors in the front slotted and drilled. And in the back, we're gonna be all OEM-ish for now. But calipers we're gonna put on, we've got the braided lines, we're gonna see if this all works and fits. And if it does, it's a win-win all here. Pretty nice. You can see the Buddy Club M Plus. Uh, what we had to do is these came off an EG, so we had to use the wishbone fork from the EK to make them work. And uh, yeah, so this whole ball joints, suspension, brakes are all gonna be mint. Lopes in the loafers, lopes in the loafers, lopes in the loafers, lopes in the loafers, lopes in the loafers. All right, so this entire side is done. Pretty cool to see some upgraded parts. What I think we're gonna do with this build for a little while anyways, is we're gonna keep it a sleeper. We're gonna paint those black so they don't look too, like, you know, kind of stand out-ish. And I'm probably gonna get OEM style wheels or just like regular kind of nothing too fancy wheels. I think we're gonna keep it a sleeper and I think it'd be funny to kind of, you know, get some races with unsuspecting people and then they're gonna think it's just a little, you know, 1.5 or 1. Point whatever it is, Honda, that motor. And then we're gonna have this all tuned up, making hopefully 200 and some odd power there. And then eventually we might go supercharger and keep it all sleeper style. Boost may happen in the future, uh, but a nice Jackson Racing Supercharger will, no intercooler, no nothing. I think will get us to that almost 300 mark, and I think that power to weight will, you know, make this car fly, let alone. <laughs> All right, well, check that out. I just finished putting on the fender. Alex is finishing up the wheel hub on that side. Uh, pretty much all we have left is the caliper and rotor, and he's tightening up the upper control arm right now. Uh, but yeah, it's nice to see a fender on here. The car's slowly coming together. The garage is slowly, don't mind that, slowly cleaning up and we're getting space. I'm excited. Literally, to get this started, we gotta finish the fuel system and just put coolant in it. Alex is gonna finish up some wiring and that's about it. What do you think there, bud? Oil, transmission fluid? Yeah, the oils. Yeah. All the fluids, but what do you think there? Tell me. Yeah, we're almost done. Almost done, you excited? I wanna hear it start. Yeah, this thing's gonna be a lot because we're gonna, we're gonna start without a header, just saying. We have the K2 header to go on and then I have an NVIDIA exhaust. So, I'm hoping this is not gonna be too loud because we're gonna try keeping it sleeperish like we said. Uh, I think it'll be interesting because you know, the outside of the car is pretty mint, uh, but it definitely could use a paint job because it does look a little old and faded. Uh, but we're gonna bring it to DC Auto Spa. He's gonna bring this thing back to life afterwards as much as he can uh, because there's things that still need to be painted. But what wheels do you guys think would work with EK9 Type R calipers and look stockish. Let me know down below. Maybe SIR uh, wheels will look better or will look good. Not sure. Let me know. I'm interested. I just have Steelys right now. I don't think it's going to clear that. Uh, but a little part of me would love some Reagan Masters on here eventually one day. Or TE37s. But shit. This is exciting. This, I was, I was taking it in. I'm like, damn, this is our first real true build like we've done a lot of mods but we've built this we built we painted we've built everything we put the motor in without a hoist if you guys haven't seen the other episodes go check out the playlist at the end of this video and let me know what you think so far so if you guys can see uh, i believe the last episode we were doing the headlight harness and we basically tucked it in as much as we could without extending anything what we had to do was cut some plugs and plug them in i'll show you on the other side but it sits right here like this i'm okay with this uh if you really want to you can cut these and extend them into the glove box and reroute this whole thing but for me this is good enough it looks pretty clean and i'm happy with it we're probably going to clean this up make it a little better but let me show you the other side so this other side you can see alex basically see all this over here he extended everything well he cut put the wires through after we cut the hole and then we, he just basically uh, put them all back together and we have all this just sitting here within the fender and then as you can see we we're just working on some wiring here so as you guys can see, everything's looking pretty good, pretty clean. Um, I'm eventually gonna change out these bolts, things like that, or those nuts, things like that to make the build a little cleaner. But it's coming together quite nicely. The fender is on on that side. My dog's barking because the pizza guy's here. We're gonna take a break and then uh, we'll go back to this. 
this whole side's done ek9 type r brakes and rotors are on uh, the rotors are from a mini cooper and uh, the ek9 type r brakes are on there but yeah it's coming together this can be a nice little sleeper i'm definitely excited this hasn't been you know a very informative episode but alex and i have been really pushing to get this done as you can see like this is all handled here and now uh fuel rail is in we're just looping some of the lines some of the coolant lines in here just to keep it cleaner also so we've looped some of these also uh this is all wired up alex has wired all this up here too and shit pretty much all the wiring is done except within the glove box and then we're going to reroute the battery to the trunk so that's going to happen afterwards all we really have left in this area is wiring the vss and fuel and the fuel obviously check that out a shifter it looks absolutely amazing there cannot wait for that and then we just got to fix all that and finish the wiring but but we are getting there ladies and gentlemen we're gonna just do it we're just tidying up a few little things nothing major right now uh we have to mount the fuel regulator i gotta see if i have a bolt and nut because we have to screw into the shock tower or drill into the shock tower and mount it there this is where it's been so far i hope you guys are enjoying so far i know these are just more updates than how to's and uh if you guys have any questions comment down below i usually answer every question i try my best to anyways one thing i highly recommend you guys buy if you're building a car is i think i bought this for like 30 bucks there's so many clips in here you can use them from so many different applications i will take this down below if you're interested in buying it. i think it was like 30 dollars canadian super cheap for everything you get like right now we're looking for as you see we have the hood on hell yeah <laughs> And then we're putting this the cowl back on, uh, but we're trying to find all the pieces for here, all the clips. So what we're doing is slowly going through, and if you can see this chaos, I kind of just left everything that was important in here, and we're just kind of, you know, putting the puzzle back together. Usually, I'm not this messy, but through this project, things got messy, things got tiresome. All right, so what we're doing right now is Alex is mounting the fuel regulator. So we've marked our first hole where we want to go. He's so gonna put the bracket up. And now Alex is just basically marking where the other hole's gonna go. And that is a tight spot, buddy. All right, so that fuel regulator was actually a bit of a pain to put in. Uh, we have to look through some hardware that I had lying around to make work, just because everything is still locked down and it's a little tough to get stuff. So uh, on the once Alex is done there, we will show you what is up. So we had to put it there and behind is where your strut and upper control arm and everything is. And it's pretty tough to hold the nut there. And we have to use two different size uh, bolts just because the one on the, well, we had two of the ones on the right, but on the left hand side it was too short because it was, I don't know, I guess it's close to an area there where the metal was a little thicker. Uh, but there it is. What do you guys think? Beautiful. It looks nice. It looks beautiful. <coughs> and it's in. Yep. Look at that. The fuel system's pretty much done. We just gotta put the other holes in. And we are gonna be golden. Acuity meets K tuned. Beautiful things. As you guys can see, the other fender is on. We're gonna put the bumper on very shortly just to see the car somewhat complete. Uh, fuel lines are all in, regulators in. What else we do today? I guess all the wiring, all the Alex. Wiring. Uh, struts, Type R brem, uh, Type R brakes, braided lines, brand new ball joints, end links, or an, tie rods. I don't know what else. We've done so much today. I tried recording as much as possible, but we're really focused on actually getting a lot of progress done. I just want this car running so you guys can see it on the road, and you know we can actually just rip it around and have some fun and it'd be nice to clear this out of the garage so I can clean right but nice sweater eh like that, holy fresh like but yeah as you guys can see everything is coming together super excited I think I may go with the Jackson racing kit try pushing around 280 300 and keep a super sleeper quiet exhaust I think that's gonna be very very fun for a little while maybe we'll change it in the future it's pretty easy to switch up because it's a manifold style, so there's no intercooler, no nothing, just pulleys and the the supercharger itself, which would replace that. That's an idea I have. Also, what color would you guys like to see the valve cover? I'm leaning towards the Jay's Racing Teal. Let me know. 
comment down below and yeah and we just got to see if the wheels fit on uh, i'm gonna have to buy wheels for the car regardless if the steelies fit we may rock the steelies for a little bit to keep that sleeper ish going all right ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching this episode we did a lot of things in 1999 civic si k20 k swapped whatever a lot was done we are getting very close to starting it up I'm gonna have to buy some coolant, uh, fluids, pretty much all the fluids need to be done also. I am super excited to actually get this thing running and see if we, you know, it's a big project for us. A lot of you guys maybe have done it, but for us this has been a decent sized project, especially painting the bay and all that also. It is coming together and I couldn't be happier. Big thanks Alex. Big shout out, big shout out. Big shout out, big shout out. <laughs> I wonder who remembers that. That's, a, that's a, from a very old video. Whoever remembers that, I'll send you out a couple stickers. Comment down below from what video was that from? Thank you so much for watching, guys. Peace out. Do it once, do it right. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Later.